Well, in this video, let us try to solve the 2018 NSEE question related to physics. You may pause the video, try yourself, and verify them. Without further delay, let us quickly take down the problems. In this question, we have a radioactive nucleus XZA, which undergoes alpha decay. Now, we have to find a number of protons and number of neutrons in the daughter nucleus. This is alpha decay. Now, let us try to understand this. Here, this is radioactive nucleus XZA. Z represents number of protons and A mass number, which undergoes alpha decay. Here alpha decay means helium nucleus is immediate. Alpha simply means helium. And then the new nucleus is formed. Let's say Y. This is total nucleus. Well, here we can see that mass number 4 is immediate. That means in the total nucleus, mass number will be reduced by 4. That is a minus 4. Here we can see that two protons are also emitted. That means in the daughter nucleus we can see that the number of protons are also reduced by 2. Therefore in the daughter nucleus we have number of protons P is equals to. So this is the number of protons. Therefore Z minus 2. We know that Mass number is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons. Therefore, mass number is given A minus 4. This is the mass number, so A minus 4. And again, number of protons, we have Z minus 2, plus we have to find N, number of neutrons. Here, we will do some simple simplification. You bring all this term to the left hand side so it will be um, minus 4 plus 2 it will be minus 2 well yeah from 1 and 2 we can see that option B is the correct answer so in the next question we have if the refractive index of a material of an equilateral prism is root 3, then we have to find the angle of minimum deviation of the prism. To solve these questions, let us turn to ray optics and optical instrument. Here we can see a ray of light passing through a triangular glass prism. This is the total deviation. Now, total deviation will be equal to minimum deviation when R1 is equal to R2. That is, refracted ray inside the prism becomes parallel to its base, PC. The refractive index of the prism is given. So we have to find BM. That is a minimum deviation. Therefore, let us read it once more. Here A is the angle of prism. Given refractive index, A will be 60 degrees since it is an equilateral prism. Therefore, Sin tra t is half. Then to a cross multiplication, it will be no root three by two is your sine sixty degree. We can see that both sides is sine. So cross multiply, it will be one twenty sixty plus. Therefore, minimum deviation will be 20 minus 60 is equal to 60 degree. When the torque acting on the system is zero, so which of the following is constant? Here are four options are given, so we have to find a constant term. By definition, torque is rate of change of angular momentum. Therefore, since torque is zero, then L is constant. Angular momentum is constant. More liquid rises in a tube because of. So this is a straightforward answer. A small value of radius. And for this answer, you have to go through the liquid rise in the capillary tube. Okay. So in this question, we have n capacitors in parallel. N is connected to a voltage source V. We have to find the energy stored in it. 
Well, in case of capacitor, we know that energy stored is equals to work done, which is equals to half capacitance of a capacitor and then the applied voltage. This is in case of one capacitor. Therefore, in case of N capacitor, it will be net capacitance, right? Give it an equation one. When capacitor is connected in parallel, the capacitance will be, then it will be N multiplied by capacitance of the capacitor. Well, substitute equation 2 in 1, therefore, work done or energy stored becomes NCB square. So, the option B is the correct answer. Here, two point charges are given, shown in figure A and B. Figure A, positive charge is given and figure B, negative point charge is given. And the potential at PQRS is given. So, there are four statements given below. We have to find which one is the correct statement. Well, let us try to remember one simple thing that is potential V is equals to some constant multiplied by charge divided by radius square. Here for figure A, the point charge is positive. So let this be Q. Here two point charges are given, P and Q. Here R1 and R2 be the distance. Well, potential P, see, potential at point P is due to this positive charge and potential at point Q is also due to this charge okay so that's here the charge is plus divided by R1 square and VQ is R2 square here we can see that the potential at point P is close to this charge then the potential at point Q so VP will be greater than VQ, right? As the point moves away further from the positive charge, then the potential decreases. Therefore, VP minus VQ will be positive. From figure B, this time the point charge is negative here. And then there are two point charges, R and S. So let this be R1 prime and R2 prime. Well, you apply the same thing, but this time the charge is negative. Then it will be R1 prime square and Vs is, yes. Here we can see that the potential at point R is close to this negative charge. Then potential at point S. So, in the case of negative, the things will be reversed. That means... Potential at point S will be greater than the potential at point R. Okay. Why? You can just put the value and then say, okay, for this distance, you can just take an example of 2 and 3 and then see, you will, you will see that the potential at S is greater. That is, VR is less than VS. Therefore, VR minus VS will be negative. So from these two results, we can see that C is the correct answer. Here we have a proton and an alpha particle are accelerated through the same potential difference. So, among the four options, which one will be the correct statement? Here, the Brillic wavelength is Planck's constant divided by momentum. Here, momentum is mass and the velocity. Here, for proton, you can see the atomic mass is one. Therefore, the Brillic wavelength for proton is h by 1 into v and for alpha particle alpha particle is helium and the atomic mass of helium is 4 now the de Broglie wavelength for helium is h by 4 into v these two will be same for both the particles because both are accelerated at same potential difference now we can see that the de Broglie wavelength for helium the denominator is greater that means will be less than yes then the deep burlic wavelength for proton is greater than deep burlic wavelength for helium okay magnetic flux linked with the coil is given and we have to find the induced emf at time equals to two seconds given magnetic flux linked with the coil see so here induced emf is equals to rate of change of magnetic flux that is emf is equals to d5 by 
dt is equals to and we know this is constant so a differentiation of constant will be zero you take out three constant it will be t square and four is constant here well we know that differentiation of t by t n will be n t n minus one yes you use this formula so n into t n minus one two minus one is one so it will be same thing here it will be simply one six t plus four this is your emf at t is equals to two so it will be 16 volt so in this question, two point mass at a given distance accelerate gravitational force on each other, which is equals to F. One mass is double. The other is half and distance between them is double. So we have to find the resultant force. From Newton's law of gravitation, we have given M1 prime is M1 by 2, half. M2 prime is 2M2. And the distance between them is double. Therefore, F prime is M1 prime, M2 prime by R prime whole square. M1 prime is M by M1 by 2. M2 prime is 2M2 divided by 2R whole square. So we can write 1 by 4. Now look at this one. This is the same as this one, right? So we can write F in place of this one. So this is so the resultant force is one by four times the F. The question says the escape velocity of a body projected vertically upward from the surface of the earth is eleven kilometer per second. So now the given condition is if the body is projected at an angle of forty five degree with the vertical, then we have to find escape velocity. Here, this is the escape velocity. Now, in this relation, you can see that escape velocity is independent of the angle of projection. That means at whatever angle the body is projected, escape velocity will remain the same. So it will still be 11 km per second. Tube P has both ends open, while tube P has one end closed. We have to find the ratio of the fundamental frequency of tube P and Q. Tube P has both ends open. That is, this is considered this to be a tube P. Then fundamental frequency for open tube is, is this one. So where L is the length of the tube. Again, tube Q has one end closed. That is, this is tube Q. Then the fundamental frequency for closed tube is, same thing where L is the length of the closed tube. Therefore, Ratio will be fundamental frequency of open tube divided by fundamental frequency of closed tube. Then this is simple. Then you will get 2 is to 1. In the Young's doubles lead experiment, the intensity of light at a point on the screen where the path difference is lambda is k. The intensity at a point where path difference is lambda by 4 will be. Well, from definition, phase difference phi is equal to 2 by by lambda into path difference. When path difference is lambda, then phase difference is 2 by by lambda into path difference is lambda. Therefore, lambda lambda cancel, we will be left with 2 by. Keep this as equation 1. When path difference is lambda by 4, the phase difference will be 2 by by lambda into lambda by 4. So lambda lambda cancel 2 2 and pi by 2. Equation 2. So the expression for intensity is given by 
this well phi is the phase difference given when both difference is lambda intensity is k and phase difference is 2 pi from equation 1 therefore intensity is k you substitute this one so it will be since therefore keep this as equation 3 when path difference is lambda by 4 we have to find intensity given phase difference is pi by 2 from equation 2 we have to find intensity So intensity is cos square pi by 4. Now from equation 3 k by into cos cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 and here we have cos square and since cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 and here we have cos square so it will be square 1 by root 2 whole square is so intensity is k by 2. So in this question we have the mass of the body is half and its speed is double. So we have to find a kinetic energy. Okay. We know that kinetic energy is given by half and v square. Keep this as equation one. Now condition is the new mass becomes half times the old mass and then the new velocity is double the old velocity all right therefore k prime is equal to half m prime v prime square substitute everything now just do the simplification in place of this one we can write it from equation one now we're saying that the new kinetic energy is two times the old kinetic energy so that is double this question is from electronics part the question says two signals p and q are used as inputs to a gate whose output waveform is y as shown below then we have to identify the gate let's identify let us try to understand this waveform here this is your zero state and this one is one state okay for all now zero one one zero zero one zero 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 yes same thing this is your one state and the lower one is your zero state so it will be one one zero zero one one zero one zero same thing one and zero 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 one zero zero one zero one so once you have identified this zero and one step now let us make a truth table for this so let this column be p and this one be q and y here p is zero q is one y is zero for time period t2 to t3 here p is one q is one and y is zero and next one zero zero for example purpose you can stop here and then you can analyze the things from here again zero zero one zero one zero one one zero now let us try to understand this output zero plus one is one so if we take the complement zero that is 0 plus 1 is 1. If we take the complement, we are getting 0. Correct? 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 is binary addition, so it will be 1. If you take the complement, 0. Correct? So 1 plus 0 is 1. If you take the complement, then it will be 0. Yeah. From first three output, 
we are getting something that is p plus q complement is y now this is the pulling expression for nor get in your textbook you will see that nor get pulling expression is a plus p complement a and b is the input and y is the output here you can see that p and q is the input so same thing only okay so this is the nor get so in this question we have two wires of same length which are shaped into a square and a circle so if they carry the same current then we have to find the ratio of their magnetic moments by definition magnetic moment is current into the area of that closed loop so let l be the length of two wires then the first condition is it is shaped into a circle so it is shaped into a circle huh? so this circle is of length l therefore its circumference is 2 by r then we can find r therefore area is then the second condition is it is shaped into a square same condition it is of length l so the parameter is 4 into side therefore side is equals to l by 4 therefore area is now we can find the ratio magnetic moment of circle divided magnetic moment of square is i into area area of circle is and area of square is given so this i i cancel therefore the ratio is 4 is to pi so we have to find the dimensions of the modulus of elasticity and then we have to compare them like whether it is same as state of energy pressure power or tau so let us see modulus of elasticity is defined as stress by strain stress is force by area okay and then strain is change in length by the original length we have to find the dimension analysis so this change in length will also have the dimensions of l and this original length will also have dimensions of length so length and length dimension will cancel we will be left with force by area only modulus of elastic cd in terms of dimension is f by a we know that pressure is force per unit area right in terms of dimension these two are same that means modulus of elastic cd has a dimension same as setup pressure so the moment of energy of a thin uniform road of mass m and length l about the axis passing through its midpoint and perpendicular to its lens so that means the concept is we have a thin road and then about the midpoint see if excess of rotation is about the midpoint then the moment in which yes i know yes but now they have changed the excess of rotation here now from here the road is rotated okay if this road is l then from here to here it will be l by 2 this is d so d is l by 2 now we know that from parallel axis theorem i is equals to moment of inertia is equals to moment of inertia about the center of mass plus mass of this road and then this distance square so moment of inertia about the center of mass is i naught plus mass so it will be l by 2 l square by 4 well in this question we have in an adiabatic chance like which one will be the correct option for this we have from thermodynamics see see the highlighted portion the system is insulated from the surroundings if we look at the third and the fourth option then the second part is satisfied that is the system is thermally insulated from the surroundings now among these two which one will be the correct option let us try to find out since the system is insulated from the surroundings then the change will occur only within the system because of the transfer of energy to the system or from the system that transfer of energy in the form of work in the last paragraph we can see as a result some chemical and physical processes 
occur too quickly. That means option C satisfies that condition. Here in this question, an alternating voltage E equals to E naught sine omega D is applied to a circuit containing a black box Z. Current in the circuit is found to be I equals to I naught cos omega T. Then we have to find a black box Z, which is not known to us. We just take a look at AC applied to a capacitor. Then the applied voltage is V equals to V M sine omega T. Alright. Then you can see that the current in the circuit is I, I is equals to I M sine omega T plus pi by 2, which can be written as since sine 90 plus theta is cos theta. So the given condition is satisfied when AC is applied to the capacitor. So the Z should be a capacitor. In this question, the graph is given as you can see here. Now, this graph shows the variation of photoelectric current I with the applied voltage V for two different materials and for two different intensities. Here the frequency of incident radiations are same. Which of the following statements is true? Let us try to find out. So we can say that this one is material 1 and this one is the material 2. Now the graph 1 of material 1. This is the intensity. And the graph 2 of material 2. This is the intensity. Here we can see that the graph 1 and the graph 2 have same intensity. Yes. And then this graph and this graph is of different material. Well, from this we can conclude that option B is the correct statement. Well, this is easy question. A tungsten wire of resistivity rho and land L has a resistance R. So we have to find the radius of the wire. We know that resistivity is given by product of resistance and area of the cross section divided by the length of the wire. Two simple simplification here. That is, right. This A is the area of cross section. So let us see what is there. If this is the conductor of length L, then this part is your A. So this is a circular cross section. It will be pi r square. So area of a circle. Now we have to find this radius. Well, now we can write. Okay. So option B is the correct answer. In a viscous medium, a particle is falling. So that means the particle will have a force and then buoyancy force because it is a viscous medium so it will have buoyancy force and then just like the friction it will have a tracking force also upward tracking force so if you do this for the terminal velocity you will get this yeah. here we can see that velocity is directly proportional to R square, the rest the oral constant and the ratio of radii consider let R1 is equal to x and R2 equals to 2x then R1 square by R2 square so x square by 4 x square 1 by 4 ratio determining velocity therefore v1 by v2 is equal to therefore v1 is to v2 is equal to 1 is to 4 so in this question we have to find the relation between volume and temperature for the sample of water in the range 0 to 100 degrees celsius so let us do that for water at 0 degrees celsius it will be solid that is in ice 100 degrees Celsius it will be and in terms of volume gas will have more volume than liquid then followed by solid because molecules within the gas are further apart and are weakly attracted to each other so the volume of the gases increases more than the volume of solid or liquid okay so this is the reason now, let us try to plot the relation. Let this be volume axis and let this be 
temperature axis origin now from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius let us say when water is at 0 degrees Celsius it will have some volume because it is in a solid state but as we increase the temperature what will happen as we increase the temperature we will see that the volume will decrease but as we increase the temperature further like say to 100 degrees Celsius then volume will increase okay. volume will further increase now in this state it will be a solid state here it is in liquid state and at 100 degrees Celsius it will be vapor so from this relation we can say that the option D is the correct answer the root mean square speed of the molecules of the gas is so you can see this is the VRMS. So let's rewrite this equation. So take the square root both side. You can write like this. Hmm? Here, there is VRMS is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature T. Because there, these are all constant. Term. And here there is no pressure. No? There is no any point of our pressure here. Length of a string tied up to a rigid support is 40 cm. So we have to find a maximum wavelength of a stationary wave produced on it. So the things are simple. The given condition is there's a 40 cm string is tied up to a rigid support. Now, to produce the maximum wavelength, we should have a one antinode in the middle. This is called ND naught. When there is one ND naught in the middle, the wavelength is two times the length. Therefore, the maximum wavelength is 80 centimeter. In this question, we have a system which is taken from state A to state C along the path ADC. So it is found that the heat and work done is 65 and 35 calories respectively. So we have to find a work done when the system is taken along the path ABC given heat is 46 calorie. So let's try. From first law of thermodynamic we have heat is equals to change in internal energy plus work done. For path ABC, ABC for this path. Then use the thermodynamic relation that is 65 internal energy is not given, work done is 25. We can find out the internal energy from here that is 25. which is again for path ABC that is for this part. A, B, C. Q is 46 kilo. So work done, we have to find. Use the same equation again. Using Q equals 2. We get. Then we can find the work done. There is. 16 calories. So this is your answer. The ground state energy of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volt. So what is the potential energy of electron in this state? We know that total energy, E total, will be equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Keep this as equation 1. For electron, Potential energy is 2 times the kinetic energy. That is a negative. We can write Yes. No. Substituting 2 in 1. Therefore then it will be Right. Therefore potential energy is 2 times the total energy. Here in our case energy is given. That is minus 13.6. Therefore, potential energy will be minus 27.2 electron volt. A magnetic field can be produced by 
So from Bayard Savit Law, we know that all magnetic field that we know are due to. So in a close bracket, we have moving charges. So magnetic field can be produced by a moving charge. In option B, we have a changing electric field. So when electric field changes, it accelerates the positive charge. That means the charge is moving. So option A and B, they both can produce magnetic field. The electrostatic field at the surface of a conductor is always. So from this figure, you can see that this is the surface of a conductor. And the arrow pointing normal to the surface of the conductor is the electric field. Now, from this whole figure, we can say that the electrostatic field or the surface of the conductor is normal to the surface of conductor. In this question, we have the ratio of amplitude of magnetic to the amplitude of electric field for an electromagnetic wave propagating in vacuum is equal to. For this answer, from the chapter of electromagnetic waves under the topic nature of electromagnetic waves, we can see that the magnitude of the electric and the magnetic field in an electromagnetic waves are related as you can see this where B and E represents magnetic and electric field well the ratio of magnetic field to the electric field is equal to 1 by C right that is the reciprocal of the speed of light in vacuum